Hey guys, welcome to Isaiah's Reviews, and this is going to be my prediction for uh, episode 8 of Star Wars, uh, The Last Jedi, uh, based on trailer number 2. So this is all the juiciness that we're going to get until the actual movie comes out in December. So we got a couple months left to go. So these are just for entertainment purposes, so nobody freak out, because I had another video I did back in like May, I think. Uh, it was titled, Mark Hamill Hates the New Star Wars. That was for entertainment purposes. That's what I gathered out of his uh, events he were going that he was going to over the past couple of years, and it's just a collage of everything that he's said and made remarks of. So make sure to check that video out. It'll be a link at the end of the video for that, and one down in the description. But also make sure to go check out the comments. Those are the juiciest, best things of these videos that are for entertainment purposes only. So nobody freak out and get really upset because I've already been dog cussed like a lot in the comments and. That's okay. People are really passionate, and I am too. I enjoy these movies, but I also enjoy talking about these movies and trying to predict the future and just for fun, seeing how close you get. So warning, spoilers could be present. I don't really know, but I'm going to go through and, and kind of just talk about what I think is going to happen in the movie based off trailer number two. And also, at the end, I'm going to ask you a question, and I really want you to get interactive in the comments. And like I said, read comments on the, the video I did back in May. I'll leave a link to that and read through the comments of this video. So we're greeted with Kylo standing there looking at a fleet, getting ready to go do something probably. And um, we can hear Snoke saying that when, when I found you, uh, you know, you had this raw power. I don't think through this narration of the Snoke's talking and stuff like that, I, I'm not sure that he is talking to Kylo. I think... This is going to be one of those twists to where he's actually talking to Ray or someone else. It would be nice if we kind of ventured off the normal Disney narrative of like the princess, because I think just like Marvel, just like a lot of franchises that exist, that there's a recipe that they develop and it's a hit and they want to stick with this recipe. But uh, it'd be nice if in Star Wars that Ray, you know, doesn't end up the princess that makes it, that survives or something. It would be cool to me if, you know, she's really extinguishes her power somewhere or another, the, you know, and, and passes away or it goes to the dark side or something like that. I think that would just be a cool surprise. It's not going to happen, but I think that would be really neat. But anyway, let's get back to, to this. Uh, after he says about the raw power, we also noticed the gorilla walkers. And I was talking with a friend of mine. I was like, you know, did you really like the go go gorilla walkers? And he was like, dude, it's just sci-fi. Star Wars, it, it's okay. It doesn't. It's not a big deal. But it kept standing out to me but that the fact that these engineers and stuff, if they would really get down and develop something like this, would they really manufacture something so large based right off of a, a, a ginormous gorilla? I just... That just stood out to me, and stuff stands out. I can't get it out of my head, and I don't like the Gorilla Walker. I wish it was – I like the idea because it's going to – you know, you won't be able to knock it over like you used to, the old ones. You know, it's just – if you're an engineer in space and you're living out your life in space, do you even know of a gorilla? I mean, how many people from all these planets – know what a gorilla is so and now we see you know and beyond that something truly special he says that and then you have a dark screen for just a second after kylo ren bends down to pick up his saber uh you assume that snoke is talking about him and then the dark screen goes to ray uh with her saber and it's um, obvious to me that it's probably talking about Ray, and I think that he is Snoke is using Kylo to get to Ray because she's like super powerful and, and probably will end up being like the almighty uh, Jedi that's whatever hung the moon and stuff. You know, Snoke wants that, and why Snoke wants that, I'll kind of get to that at the end. I have a good theory on who Snoke is. Where, where he's from, and all that good stuff. She is the chosen one, wax on, wax off. And then we get to see Ray hand Luke uh, the lightsaber, and he's kind of got this, what the crap, like, look, like, oh, God. And I think it's one of those things where he's dreading this interaction because he kind of knows, he has an idea of what's out there. Really, no idea, but he knows that it's really strong, it's really powerful, it's the strongest thing he's ever felt so this is going to be 
Very interesting to 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 hear his backstory, like where he's been, what he's been doing. I have a feeling he's been studying books uh, that he uh, was able to salvage after the fire, which we'll see that footage or uh, that shot in a minute. But I think he's just kind of uh, hanging out, been talking to Force Ghost, I hope, and really studying and trying to figure out how to defeat Snoke. And she makes reference to being awake, and I think it's uh, I think the Force awakens. You know, the Force Awakens in her and also uh, in Snoke. And that really is drawing Snoke even harder. It's almost like you've been in a desert for a really long time. You have no food or water. And then all of a sudden somebody sets a gallon of water and a big old juicy steak right in front of you. You know, you're really passionate. You really want that. You want to consume that. And uh, I think that's that's the Force Awakens. And that's Snoke really, really getting off on wanting to to interact with Ray. And then we have Luke training Ray and Luke is mesmerized like out of his mind that uh, the ground cracked from her meditating because she has her eyes closed and she's like levitating these rocks and, and, and cracks this boulder or something like that. And he just looks like he totally crapped his pants. Like this is a mesmerizing look. And for him to be, you know, this Jedi, this experienced person and to have this look on his face really means something big so she's like out of this planet special already and that was the thing from the last movie that irked me a little bit it's kind of like how do you everybody else just trains and trains and trains to achieve certain things and be able to even move something and she does it and doesn't even know why she's doing this or how she's able to do it. She just has this force awakening. And then all of a sudden, boom, she can do all this stuff. And it's almost like she's like, boom, able to do all this stuff here. And I don't know how long she's here for, but it doesn't look like very long. She's already cracking boulders and stuff like that. And I think that's that's what's blowing his mind. There's not this long time there progression of training, training. It's he didn't expect that. That was super fast, right off the bat. So I really hope they do a great job of filling in how in the heck is she able to be like this like what version of a jedi like what level is she at that's obviously higher than luke it's probably like the pinnacle of all jedis it seems like to me that's kind of where they're going and and like i said earlier disney's recipe of a princess of a almighty figure princess like wins and all this stuff that's that's the winning recipe and i hope it just fits and and like the puzzle is complete when this is over and then he makes reference to i've seen this raw strength before and it didn't scare me then so this is probably kylo he's he's saw that uh whenever the uh jedi temple and all that stuff was being burned down it didn't scare him uh, but he's seeing this raw power now, and he makes reference to raw, which means there is no taming of this power, and it's susceptible to Sith. It's susceptible to the dark side and being controlled by that. And there's a scene uh, toward the end of the trailer that I'll get into later whenever some stuff might be happening, but just know that the him saying raw power that means it's not in a tamed state uh, she doesn't know how to control it and that means i think that she's super susceptible to uh, snoke and snoke knows that he's on a timeline and he's got to get to her before luke has had too much time with her and then and then we go to to kylo smashing his helmet and he's also right after that kind of flying around his little spaceship, uh, and it looks like he's going to blow his mom up. And I think, I kind of think he doesn't do it. And I think the helmet smashing scene is maybe after that, that he's aggravated that he doesn't, that he did not step up and, and do that because he's still struggling. He's going to end up like, like Vader and, and leave at the end just in time to save Ray. You know, it's going to be like this, this swap, like, Kylo is Darth Vader in that moment whenever he realizes and saves Luke. So I think Kylo's going to do the same thing and possibly save Ray later 
because he's got this huge struggle, internal struggle, struggle going on, and he he is not bound like Vader was. Vader was bound by his limitations and his constant agony that he was purposely put into to, to suffer for not doing what he was supposed to do. That kept his mind from, from wondering too much, that suffering and stuff. And that's why Darth Vader was so just robotic in, in mindset, like a, with a goal, you know, got to go do a mission. It's, it's because of the state he was placed purposely into. He could have been healed totally better and, and put up into some better gear than what he was. I think that was just part of his punishment. And then we see this cross between a gerbil and a penguin. Uh, and this must be the co-pilot. This must be uh, the Wookiee co-pilot uh, now. And this is also a toy, a plush toy. And I don't know if it makes noises or not, but I've heard that it's like 40 something bucks, almost $50 already, and you can buy it now. And it's kind of crazy that everything from the trailers are, they're at the stores that has toys and, and available to purchase, almost like the film has been out. Here's the toys, but they're just selling the toys from the trailers, making that money. And then we get a shot of Mr. Popo, and I'm really excited to see Poe's capability, like him unleashed. Like, not only do I want to see him unleashed, I really want to see Luke unleashed. I mean, he's had a lot of time to master, to become this Jedi master, and we really, I really want to see, like, a let loose, like, Luke, because it should be better than what Ray is going to do, and it's really going to aggravate me if Ray is so young, raw power, yes, but not controlled, not focused, not maintained like Luke's should be, and Luke should really put on a good coordinated show. And at the end of Rogue One, you remember how Darth Vader was just doing that really awesome stuff? It would be really nice to see Luke times 10 of that be able to just go off and if that doesn't happen to me that's like a huge letdown and that will be talked about for like ever because once these movies are done episode nine's over i think this saga is over and it goes to something else which i'll bring up to where i think it's going a little bit later and then we have captain phasma there's a rumor that she's actually a good guy kind of covert undercover so you know, they're fighting now, but it's possible, maybe, and then other people say, no, that's just fan theory that's always looking for something opposite of what's really there. And then Luke says, this is not going to go the way you think. I think he's probably talking uh, to Kylo. I, I, I don't think this is a Ray conversation. I think this is an aggravated, he's kind of down, pinned it looks like in, in in some boulders on the side of some kind of mountain or something. So I think he may be talking to Kylo, and, and I hope he's not in a position to where he's not able to function. Like he's been beat by this whiny brat that should not be able to beat Luke. Like no way. Either that, or it could be Snoke, or it could be some other bad guy that is above Kylo. I would think it would be great if we all assume that it's going to be light and dark and Kylo and Ray, and then there's actually someone in between that's maybe a Snoke helpery, helperoo that that uh, makes an appearance this time and then ends up being something more uh, sinister in, in, in episode nine. And then you got Snoke telling Ray to fulfill her destiny. This is where it gets interesting. I think Snoke is from like the old Republic times. He was awakened at some point. Something happened in these older movies uh, that awakened him. And I don't know if it was her birth or whatever. And her force awakened in her. And, you know, that was like a beacon for Snoke. And Snoke is a Jedi soul sucker. And I think he could be, you know, her purpose may be to completely heal him all the way because he's been entombed, he's been asleep or whatever. And his face, you know, on one side of his cheek is kind of eaten away and he's like the crypt keeper. And uh, there at the end, he's got his hand up blocking that hole in his jaw there. And I think that's for a reason because that's probably filled in because he's regenerating himself back. And once he gets to full power, that's the insanity. Like, he would be 
unstoppable. There's no way, no Jedi would be able to take him down. Like, it would be lights out, game over, dark side, ruling, ruling it all. Her purpose, I think, is to feed him and to finish his feeding because this is like this massive raw power that he wants and must consume. And this will connect to the old Republic, which I think Disney, if, if this is correct, I heard that Disney is going to start taking on uh, old Republic movies and stuff like that and branching off, which they may be able to, to, to uh, kind of, you would see Snoke's origins or something like that. There's two names that Snoke could be, but if they're video game related, I'm going to leave this in the comment section. Do, do a little bit of research. I've already done it and i have my mind made up on who i believe snoke is but i don't think they can use that name so they they may just borrow some abilities uh from other people uh in video games and stuff like that and kind of make their own guy but just you know whatever you think is going on with snoke like what is he doing with ray is he trying to corrupt her because she is that she has this raw power and and he can get in there uh, and 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 twist her mind and her thinking and actually convert her and wipe her memory away and actually switch her over to the dark side. That that is a thing because she's so young and uh, and just raw. And or is he like her purpose is to feed his uh, hunger and to kind of heal him back or bring him back into his powerful state. That, that he was in like over a thousand years ago or something like that. So that's that's what I think's up. If so, Luke could step in somehow, save her and possibly get killed. I think Luke will die. And I think that, you know, he's been on this island talking to these force ghosts, reading these books, studying, trying to figure out what to do because this dude is, Snoke is unimaginable and then ray says there at the end i need somebody to show me my place in all of this i think she's talking to luke um and then they cut to kylo holding his hand out i don't think those are happening at the same time i think he's holding his hand out it could be one of those han solo death moves where he's like i love you dead day and stab your dad or it just straight up could be that he switched back over. It should be pretty interesting because I think um, with episode eight, it's actually going to get good because uh, Force Awakens, you know, you have to set up these new characters and, and, and all this junk. And at least now, eight and nine, we're going to be able to go full-fledged into interesting story for the whole time. And, and I don't think we're going to have to go into much of uh, people, characters' backstories and stuff like that. And I do think that, you know, Carrie Fisher's going to end up dying here. I don't know. I don't think Kylo will do it because he's already killed Han. And I think that Snoke will order Captain Phasma or something like that maybe to kill her or the other powerful thing that is Snoke's right-hand man that's not Kylo will do that. And I think that's what might push Kylo over the edge after he smashes his helmet and stuff like that. The hand holding out thing may be an agreement to, you know, he, he's apologizing. I don't know, but I would like to see that. And I don't want a predictable storyline, even though I'm trying to predict it. I want it to be really good. I just want so bad for this to, to be twist into this. I don't want to watch it and know exactly how these things are going to play out and it happens. So uh, please leave comments. Make sure to explode on that subscribe button and ding that bell so you get notified. When the movie comes out, I'll do a review on it, so you'll be able to see that and all this other stuff that I do. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you.